For over a month now, I've been testing four popular cell cameras head to head. I've been testing them from the same location at the same time under the exact same conditions. And I've been getting some pretty interesting results. I'm gonna continue my testing here today and I'm gonna test things like trigger speed and trigger distance, photo and video quality, both daytime and nighttime. We'll take a look at the apps and the ease of use, battery life, the physical size of each camera, and much more. I'll give you my opinion on which I believe is the winner of each category, and then in the end, I'll give what I think is the overall winner. If I could only have one camera out of the four, which one will I choose? Should be a lot of useful information, but first, let's meet the contestants. So here are the four cameras in no particular order. First is the Browning Defender Ridgeline. Now this is a dual carrier cellular trail camera, which means it'll work on either AT&T or Verizon networks. It's advertised as 20 megapixel pictures and it has full HD 1080p videos. This camera can operate on an SD card up to 512 gigs. It has a heavy duty steel tree mount and it also can take eight rapid fire shots in two seconds. The Browning camera also advertises a zero blur technology and it has audio with its 1080p videos. The camera operates on 16 AA batteries and has an easy three-step camera activation. The next camera is a covert code black select. Now this camera is also a dual carrier, which means it can be operated on both the Verizon and AT&T. It's advertised as having 30 megapixel pictures and 4K HD video. It has a 0.2 second trigger speed, up to 100 foot flash, and operates on 12 AA batteries. This camera has a built-in pipe-through security, which will be compatible with Python cables. It also operates on SD cards up to 32 gigs. The third camera is the Stealth Cam Reactor. Now this camera can also operate on the Verizon or AT&T networks. It's advertised as 26 megapixel and has video with audio. The camera is advertised as having a 100 foot detection range and has 42 no-glow IR emitters. Its advertised trigger speed is 0.4 seconds. It can be in burst mode giving you one to nine photos and the SD cards can be up to 128 gigs. The Stealth Cam also has the Matrix Advanced Blur Reduction and it also has Retina which is their low light sensitivity. The fourth and final camera is the Wild Game Innovations Encounter. Now this camera operates on the Verizon or AT&T networks and is advertised as having 26 megapixel pictures. It has an 80 foot detection range and has 24 low glow IR bulbs. The Encounter gives you the wide angle 16.9 aspect ratio pictures. It can operate on SD cards up to 32 gigs and works with eight AA batteries. Throughout my testing, I'll be using the same brand and size SD card in each of the four cameras. I'll also be using the same brand alkaline batteries in each of the cameras, although the number of batteries that each camera accepts may be different. Well, you've met the four contestants now, and as you can see, I have a variety of tools and props I'm gonna to use to continue my head-to-head -head testing with these four cameras. In past comparison videos of other Cider Trail cameras, I got a lot of feedback on what you liked about those comparison videos and what you would like to see different to maybe make it a little fairer or more realistic. So I'm gonna implement some of those changes, but let's get to work. So one of the first differences and feedback that I listened to is how I mounted the cameras for this comparison. In previous videos, I had the cameras mounted on top of each other, uh, kind of side by side and on top of each other. And a lot of people did not like the difference in height of the sensors and the lenses. Now all four cameras are mounted on a horizontal board and I took the time to use a level and a tripod to get them both perfectly level horizontally and vertically. Should make it as fair as I possibly can. Overall from the first camera to the last camera, there's approximately 12 inches of difference side to side. 
So I have four cameras set up perfectly level horizontally and vertically. I place three cones out in front of the cameras at 30, 60, and 90 feet away using my laser rangefinder. I have all four cameras set up on photo mode and three photo burst. Things you can take notice in this test is the photo quality. Each of these cameras will be at the same location under the same conditions at the same time. So that should give you a real good indication of what type of photo quality each of these cameras can give in comparison to the other camera. As I walk at those three distances, you can also see where I'm at in comparison to the cone when the camera takes those three photos. You can also look for field of view. Each of these cameras are at the same spot, so you'll be able to tell which one gives you the widest field of view and which one is the narrowest field of view in this test. Another thing I'll mention is each one of these four cameras is on the highest megapixel setting available on each of the cameras. And the photos that you're seeing, the sample photos that I'm showing, are gonna be the HD version pulled directly from each of the SD cards. Now let's get to the good stuff, the actual testing and results. I walked at 30, 60, and 90 feet in front of the camera, and here are the results. This is the three photo burst from the browning, three photo burst from the covert, and a three photo burst from the stealth cam, and a three photo burst from the wild game innovations. These were all at 10 feet. Now for the 30 foot test, the browning, covert, stealth cam at 60 feet, and the wild game innovations. Lastly, I walked at 90 feet. This is from the stealth cam. This is the wild game innovations. You'll notice that there were no pictures from the Browning or the Covert. Neither one of those cameras detected motion when I was at 90 feet in the daytime. Here's another look at the results of the walk test. I took the middle picture of the three photo bursts from each camera. Here is the 30 foot results, the 60 foot results, and the 90 foot results. To further test the speed of the PIR sensors, I now drove in front of the cameras with my cart a lot faster and at 60 feet. These were the results from the Browning, the Covert, the Stealth Cam, and the Wild Game Innovations. So this should be an interesting test. I have you set up there in the shade and I have the cameras right here. For this test, we'll test a couple of things. First, I'm gonna walk in front of the cameras within a foot or two of the camera. Now I'm sure all four cameras are gonna trigger, but will they be able to capture me at all in any of the three photos because I'm that close and walking in front of the cameras? But secondly, I'm gonna come directly here and I'm gonna show you my smartphone and see which one of the four cameras can send the notification first that there has been new activities. Now keep in mind, all four cameras are operating on the AT&T network. They're obviously at the same location, so the availability of signal should be the same to each one of the four cameras. And although I don't have great service with my smartphone, it'll be equal for all four of them to try and send me that signal because I'm at this one location. So that's test, I'm gonna walk in front of it and show you my smartphone to see which one can capture me in front of the cameras that closely and which one can send the fastest notification. So now we'll simply wait to see which one sends the notification first. We have our first notification, it is the covert. That camera has consistently sent the notification first every single time. 
So you can see the browning also send a notification. Another thing that you'll notice that is different, Covert sends each one of the photos separately. So it sends three different photos. Uh, you get three different notifications while the other three cameras only send one notification of the three photo burst. So the Covert is consistently the fastest, might have to do with only sending that first, but there are times it can send all three notifications before any of the other cameras even send one. In this case, the browning sent this notification second fastest and it, it does have all three thumbnail photos on it in that one notification consistently the stealth cam is third place and if we're gonna sit and wait for the wild game it could be a while it takes usually a minute or two in order for that wild game to send that notification as you can see right now we still do not have any notification from both the stealth cam or the wild game innovations Again, those two cameras definitely lag way behind when it comes to the notification or the speed of which it notifies you that there's new activity. And now we finally got a notification uh, that the stealth cam has new activity. Still nothing from the wild game innovations. It really does take the longest of any of those four cameras and by far. And here are the picture results from the walking directly in front of the camera. All four cameras capture me on the very first picture of the three photo burst. Next, let's transition to the night test. I'm gonna walk at 30 feet, and this is the browning, the covert at 30 feet, the stealth cam, and the wild game innovations. Next is a 60 foot test, the browning, covert, stealth cam, and the wild game innovations at 60 feet. Next is the 90 foot test, this is the browning, the stealth cam, and the wild game innovations at 90 feet. You'll notice there were no pictures from the covert at 90 feet. Lastly, I drove the cart at 60 feet at nighttime. Again, much faster than walking. These are the results. Browning, covert, wild game innovations. In the drive test, there was no picture from the stealth cam. It did not take any pictures of the drive test. So next, I placed all four cameras on video mode. I'm simply gonna go out in front of these cameras and trigger it. We'll be able to see the video quality in the daytime. I'll also speak, so if they have audio, we'll be able to tell what type of quality audio they offer on video mode. So let's test the video capabilities of the four cameras. I put all four cameras on video mode on the highest video quality. You can see how well the video does. You can also check out. When I completed the video test, I thought I either had a corrupt file or a malfunction from the wild game innovations. I went back and repeated the test three more times with that camera. The exact same results every single time. The video really is that poor and for whatever reason it flashes and has that white effect. There is also no audio with this camera while the other three have audio. We'll talk about the results of the video test and their audio capabilities later in my final thoughts. 
There are two more things that I wanted to test and discuss before we get to those final thoughts. One is the apps. So let's take a look at the app from each one of these cameras. I'll quickly go through some of the features and the functions that the app allows you to control on each of the cameras. We're gonna start with the browning. When you open up the app, uh, you can go and click on the gear icon. This brings you up all the settings that you're allowed to change remotely with this camera. Uh, I'll scroll down through here and you can look at what some of those uh, different things are, but anything from photo and video quality, how fast it sends you the notification or those pictures, whether you want that to be instant or you wanna schedule that, many other settings. We're gonna click back here and go to all photos. Uh, here it's gonna bring up all the photos that the camera has taken and sent. Uh, you can scroll back through uh, many different days and months. Uh, you can also click and change the size of that preview uh, thumbnail. If you want it much larger to get more detail, uh, you can do that here through the app. So you can see a pretty nice layout, uh, gives you uh, plenty of options to customize your camera, both in the settings and how you would preview the thumbnails. So next, we're gonna open up the Covert uh, while this loads. Uh, keep in mind, each one of these apps, it kinda comes down to personal preference, which one you think is best. I will point out some of the differences between them. When you open up the app here in the Covert, you can click on the camera. It brings up all the pictures uh, that were taken. You can scroll back through different days and different months. Uh, as near as I can tell, you cannot change the thumbnail preview size. Now you can click on each one of the photos and it'll bring up a larger size uh, but the actual preview uh, window when it has all the photos is uh, rather small to change the settings you simply click on the gear icon up there in the corner uh, you can scroll through and change uh, your notifications and the different camera settings uh, you can see the camera mode obviously you can change from photo to video uh, you can schedule a work time uh, you can also go into the general settings where it allows you to change the flash power and the maximum number of photos per day that it'll send you to so choose whether you want that to be instant or schedule a certain times of the day that it'll be sending you those photos or videos. Next, we'll open up uh, the Stealth Cam Command app. This is the same app that both Muddy and Stealth Cam operates. So you can see I have both cameras. If you click on the Stealth Cam, uh, it brings up uh, different settings that are available. Down here in the bottom, you have the camera setup and the sight are set up. I find this very easy. It gives you a lot of different options, uh, the operations that you can change with the camera. Maybe more options than some of the other ones. Uh, you can really dial in the settings exactly how you want them through the Stealth Cam app. Uh, I do wanna show you the photos. When you bring up the photos, again, you can scroll through and see all the photos that it has taken. You can change the size of the preview by clicking that button, whether you wanna make it smaller, uh, medium, or large, so three different sizes there. I'll show you something that's pretty unique, um, that is unique just to this camera when you compare it to the other four. If you click this button here, you can actually transform the photos at nighttime from the night IR to a colored version. Now this is just an AI feature through the app. The actual photo, if you would pull it on the SD card, is still gonna be in black and white. Uh, but through this artificial intelligence, it could give you an idea of what it would look like if it was color. Uh, I like the feature, it's kind of unique. Uh, you can scroll through and see it does a pretty good job uh, of turning your black and white photos to color by simply just clicking that button through the app. Again, remember, this is just through the app. Uh, it does not change the actual photos that are on the SD card. Lastly, let's look at the Wild Game Innovations. When we bring that, that app up, it's the Hunt Smart app. It gives you the reading of the battery and how many photos the camera has taken. If you do click down here on all photos, it brings you up the whole list of all the photos that are on the SD card. Uh, you can scroll through and see different photos that was taken. Again, with this app, you can change the size uh, of the thumbnail from small or medium. Uh, it gives you different options. If we go to the cameras, uh, we can click the settings and look at the settings probably the least amount of customization available with this Wild Game Innovations. There are only uh, several different settings there that you can change. You can change from photo to video, but doesn't give you a lot of other uh, settings on how quickly you want the photos to be burst and, and different options that some of these others have. 
So I would say uh, pretty minimalistic on the Wild Game Innovations app. It works, uh, I have no trouble navigating it. It's just uh, pretty simple on the setting setup. The last thing I wanted to test before starting to pick winners for individual categories is battery life. Now I find it nearly impossible to compare battery life even while the cameras are being used at the exact same location because some of the cameras only take eight batteries while the Covert takes 12 and the Browning takes 16. To get a baseline, I took all the batteries out of the cameras and then powered them through the external power port. I used a power pack to supply the power. I ran that power through my voltmeter and then to the external power port of the cameras. I then covered each of the cameras with a towel to force the night IR. I checked how many milliamps the camera took to take three pictures at nighttime. I then checked how many milliamps it took to send those three pictures to the app. And I also timed how long it took to send those three pictures to the app. Here are the results. The Browning took 0 0.30 milliamps to take the three pictures, and it took 0 0.04 milliamps to send the three pictures. It averaged 34 seconds to send the three pictures. The Covert took 0.19 milliamps to take the three pictures, while it took 0 0.09 milliamps to send the three pictures. The Covert sent the first picture in 16 seconds. It sent all three pictures in 32 seconds. The Stealth Cam consumes 0.14 milliamps while taking the pictures, and it was 0 0.09 milliamps to send the three pictures. It took a minute and 35 seconds to send the pictures. The Wild Game Innovations took 0.11 milliamps to take the three pictures, and it averaged 0.11 milliamps to also send the three pictures. The Wild Game Innovations took one minute and 57 seconds to send three pictures. Well, enough numbers and doing tests. It's time for my final thoughts. I'm gonna recap a lot of the tests that I have performed, tell you my opinions and thoughts on how the cameras did, pick a winner for each category, and in a few minutes, I will give what I think is my overall winner. If I could only pick one camera out of these four, which one do you think it would be? So let's get started with the appearance or just comparing the four cameras. For me, the smaller the better. I like a compact camera. It's easier to conceal and hide. It's easier to carry around in the field and to place it out in the woods. And if you're simply looking at a compact size, the Wild Game Innovation is the clear winner. It's easily the smallest of these four cameras. Both the Covert and the Browning are the largest. It's, it might be a tie on which one's bigger. I know the Browning is the heaviest of these four cameras when you have 16 batteries in it. And with this size, it is quite a lunk. It's like carrying around a large brick in your backpack. Also, with their physical appearance, you can see three of these cameras have external antennas that screw on to the camera body. The Browning has a built-in stub antenna. It's very small and compact, so I like that as far as animals not being able to break it off or easily chew on it. The problem with that is if you would try to upgrade or to boost your signal, you cannot replace this antenna on the Browning easily. The last few things with the physical appearance is the Covert does have the internal screen. None of the other three cameras have an internal screen. The last thing I'll touch on that kind of goes with the physical appearance, uh, these three cameras all have black flash. They are indetectable to the human eye. If you watch these cameras at nighttime, there is zero indication that it's taking a photo or a video. The Wild Game Innovations is a low glow. At night, if you look directly at this camera, you can see a red glow while it's taking a photo or a video. With all that said, if I were to choose simply by the looks or the compact design, it would have to be the Wild Game Innovations. Now, as you'll see as we go on, it lacks in many other departments, but just for its small compact size, it's the winner of that one category. The next category we're gonna dive into is that PIR sensor, how quickly these cameras can be activated to take a photo or a video. In my testing, I walked in front of the cameras that gave you a good idea of how quickly it would start taking pictures. 
the wild game innovations and the stealth cam reactor were the quickest and fastest PIR sensors. In fact, they were so quick that they often missed me on that first photo. There were times when only the second and third photo actually had me in frame. They're so quick that they would actually miss me. The Browning and Covert, in my opinion, were probably tied for third and fourth. They were definitely not as quick, but with that said, you were often more centered in the pictures from these two cameras. Now I have no way of knowing, but I'm assuming with these two cameras for as quick as they are and because I'm not even in frame in some of the pictures, I would say that their PIR sensor angle is even wider than what the actual field of view of the lens. It's a little bit of a cheating that the manufacturers do in order to get that fast trigger speed. Now fast trigger speed is great if something's moving quickly in front of it, but by having that wider PIR sensor versus the lens field of view, if an animal stays just so out of range of the lens, the PIR sensor may be telling the camera to continue to take photos, but there's nothing on it. That's gonna lead me right into the experience I had with both the Wild Game Innovations and the Stealth Cam Reactor. I got a lot of false triggers with these two cameras. In fact, in my testing in over a month now, I have gotten nearly 10,000 photos from these four cameras combined, but several hundred of those were from these two cameras and they were false triggers. Now there were times I'm sure that the animals were just out of range of the lens, but the PIR sensor was seeing them just as I was discussing, but there were times when for hours on end, these cameras would simply just take pictures one after another, especially in the high sunlight. At nighttime, I had almost no issues with them taking false triggers. In the hot sun, it was almost constant false triggers. That was not ideal, and so for this category on the fastest PIR, even though these cameras were definitely faster, I think they're so fast and so sensitive that they're prone to false triggers, which is gonna lead me to the Browning and the Covert as the winner for the best PIR sensors. The next category we're gonna talk about is the photo quality. Now I know some of this comes down to personal opinion, but when you compare the photos, I personally believe that the Browning has the best photo quality, especially in the daytime. For me, a close second would be the Covert. Definitely crystal clear photos, but not quite as vivid colored as, as what the Browning provides. Now the Stealth Cam and the Wild Game camera have a lot of color, but in my opinion, it's oversaturated, too much color, and it almost looks fake. In my opinion, the worst camera of these four is the Wild Game Innovations. Daytime and nighttime, the pictures seem to have the most grain. So for me, the winner in that category, real close, I would probably say the Browning has the best photo quality, followed closely by the Covert camera. Next, let's talk about the video quality. As you saw in my video test, it was both looking at the quality and the audio with the videos. The clear loser was the Wild Game Innovations. Terrible quality and it has no audio included with its videos. While we're talking about audio, the Stealth Cam has the best microphone, or at least in my opinion. All the samples that I showed you, I did not adjust any of the videos simply as they came out of the file from the camera. I put them on for you to view. The Stealth Cam has the best audio included with the video, but for me, the best video, again, between the Covert and the Browning. Now remember, the Covert is a 4K video, while the Browning is 1080p. For video quality, uh, it's probably the Browning. For audio, it would be the Stealth Cam. Let's quickly touch on the camera's apps. Now I showed you quick examples of how the apps look. What I did not discuss, I had a few issues with the Browning app. Now each of these cameras, when you switch them from like photo mode to video mode, or you're changing resolutions or changing the number of photos that the camera takes, it does take some time in order for those changes to take effect. Most cell cams will make those changes the next time the camera activates or the next time the camera syncs up with the server. I had issues with the Browning making any changes even after days. I would make the changes, walk in front of the camera, know that the camera takes 
pictures or videos, but yet it would not make the changes that I made in the app. So with that said, I would not pick the Browning as the best app. Uh, for me, the best app probably goes to the Stealth Cam. It has the most options and the most of settings that you're allowed to change versus the other three cameras. And I like that option of the AI making the nighttime photos look like they have color. I know it's something minor, and in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really do anything because it doesn't change the pictures on the SD card, but I like that option, and it gives a nice look to the pictures on the app. Now, I quickly discussed battery life. Uh, these two cameras each take eight batteries. The Covert takes 12. The Browning takes 16. In my month, month and a half test, where I had all four of these cameras functioning side by side, only one camera went dead, and that was the Browning. Now I showed you the numbers and the different tests, uh, how quickly they send photos, and how much power it takes to take a nighttime photos. Uh, the Browning didn't look awful in those numbers, but the Browning took the least amount of pictures of these four cameras during the test. Remember, it doesn't have a great PIR sensor, and it takes 16 batteries, and it went completely dead on me. The other three are still on the original batteries that I put in back in February. So if you made it this far, you deserve an answer from me. If I could only pick one camera, which one of these four would be? And I'll have to say this was the toughest decision. The clear loser for me is definitely the Wild Game Innovations. It has a poor photo quality in my opinion, both daytime and nighttime, has horrible videos. You wouldn't even consider this camera if you want to run a camera on video mode. And remember all those false triggers? Uh, that's definitely at the bottom of the stack. So then my decision was between these three cameras. I really like the Browning's photo quality and video quality. Of course, I liked the audio on the Stealth Cam and I'm a big audio guy when I run my cameras on video mode. I want that nice and clear audio. The Stealth Cam delivered that. I really liked the Covert because of how quickly it can send those notifications. But if I simply was forced to choose only one camera, it would probably be the Stealth Cam. I didn't really even want to pick it as the winner. I like the Browning camera, but when you consider the cost of this Browning camera, uh, it definitely killed 16 batteries for me where the other ones did not and are still on the original batteries. Although it has great photo and video quality, its audio wasn't that great. The antenna not being able to be upgraded is a little bit of an issue for me. So I would probably pick the Stealth Cam as the winner. Now that's obviously just my personal preference, but now I'd love to hear from you. You've watched my review, you watched the test that I did, which camera would suit you best and which one would you pick as a winner? Do you operate any of these cameras? I'd love to hear from you and your experiences. Please leave me a comment down in the comment section which camera you liked throughout my testing, which cameras you've had experience with, and what those experiences were. I enjoy hearing from you, I can often learn from you, and I try and get back to each and every one of you. Rest assured, I have more comparison videos coming. They take a ton of effort to compile all this information and data and put it into the video but I enjoy the process and I will be bringing more in the future. I just can't promise a timeline, but until then, I wanna thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video.